Hey, what's up guys? Rob here, and I'm back with a brand new video. Good folks over at Wild Eye Releasing sent me a box of movies to review for you guys, so today I'm going to be tackling one of my favorite Wild Eye Releasings in a while. I enjoyed the hell out of this film. The Sitter. This movie is actually getting some hate. Uh, people are rating it one star, two stars, and I really do not get it. This film was awesome. The acting was top-notch, the effects were great, and the sound design was amazing. I cannot stress that enough. One of the actors uh, in this movie was actually in charge of the sound department, or he was in charge of the sound design, actually, um, which was cool. But The Sitter. Um, <clears throat> has a bunch of different titles. The original title for this was Charlotte Wakes because the main character, uh, her name is Charlotte in this. Uh, the UK title was Darkness Wakes. Um, it was released in the UK August 28, 2017 as a runtime of 97 minutes. Um, it was directed and written by Simon Richardson who did an amazing job here's one of the images from the film uh, the main actress here um, it's pronounced uh, Ashling Knight she plays Charlotte she looks like she's possessed right there uh, it wants her mind, body, and soul. It says, watch this in the dark with a few candles lit and expect to feel a cold shiver run down your back. A superb slice of terror that marks writer, director Simon Richardson and star uh, Ashling Knight as towns to watch. And it's true. This movie is kind of slow paced in the beginning, but it builds up the tension and suspense. It's one of those haunted house films and they do it so well. They build it up. I know a lot of people were disappointed with the third act. I thought the third act was fine. I kind of expected it. But I, I saw nothing wrong with it, the third act. But you have uh, Ashling Knight, who plays Charlotte, who is the main actress here. You got Richard Kilgore, who plays Mr. Farrow. And oh my God, he is amazing. Uh, you got Mr. and Mrs. Farrow. Um, Jill Buchanan plays Mrs. Farrell. She was also in, um, well, she's actually uncredited in a lot of movies, like Doctor, Her Doctor Strange and Transformers The Last Night. Um, but you got Nick Butler, who played Davis in this movie. He's kind of a, uh, well, they make him seem like he's like a, a pedophile or some kind of crazy weirdo or pervert. Um... But uh, he actually does something. I'm not going to spoil the movie, but uh, he actually does something kind of heroic. Um, but he's also in charge of the sound department. He also works on the sound for this for this movie, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there's a creature in this movie that reminds me of The Midnight Man, which is also another good film. But the story goes, um, Charlotte, she is a student that is offered a job cat-sitting, of all things. It's not like your typical, you know, when a stranger calls, where you go over to babysit the children and you put them to sleep, and then, you know, there's a stranger in your house or whatever. It's not like that at all. But she gets a job cat-sitting at this old manor house, um... Kind of a creepy house. For three nights. And she earns, I think, 200 pounds a night. And these people, the pharaohs, they're just, they're creepy. You know, they give her the house tour and they tell her not to go in certain rooms. Which is expected in some of these films. Um, you know, don't go into this locked room because there's... You know, you're just not supposed to be in there. But, of course, you know, the main character, that just urges them to go into the room. When people say don't do it, they usually do it. 
which is another horror cliche, but why not? you got to figure out what's going on. As the nights go on, she starts hearing things. Um, that's where the sound design comes in. Um, you start hearing footsteps in the attic upstairs. One of the rooms that the guy told her not to go into. Um, she starts hearing footsteps. She, she can't find the cat either. She doesn't even find the cat until like the second act. And um, but yeah, kind of a creepy feeling. Like she she's going down these creepy hallways with these weird looking shaped doors. Um, whoever was the architect in the house obviously didn't know what the hell they were doing. But she starts having bad nightmares about this creature <clears throat> with these kind of like long fingers. And he has kind of, a, you know, he has sharp teeth. He, he looks just like the Midnight Man. Looks just like him. He's kind of a, he, you know, he has a robe. Uh, really, really cool. But, um... You know, she sees herself in the dream where she's fully naked. And she looks just like this. This is actually the scene. Her eyes are like that. It's almost like she's possessed. Pretty awesome. The effects are awesome. And like I said, they build up to it. Because you're trying to figure out what's going on here. Is the house haunted? Are these people hiding a secret? Is there something in the attic? Is there something in the cellar? You know, is it all about uh, like a satanic cult? Then you have these creepy neighbors with this weird lady who claims she's a uh, God's woman or whatever. You know, she's she's a, she's a woman of God. And then, the, you know, the pervert Davis who sneaks into the house, smells her underwear and licks it. I think he even licks it, too. And she gets naked like <laughs> like three or four times in the movie, and I mean fully, fully naked, which I did not expect. But, really awesome film. You, you want to know what's going to happen with this character because you really feel for her. Like, she did an amazing job. Ashley Knight was great in this movie when she was all emotional and she's crying and she's scared. You, you really believe her. She was excellent. Her and, like I said, Richard um, Kilgore, I think that's how you say it, Kilgore, he, uh, you know, Mr. Farrell, he was awesome too. Even though he wasn't in, you know, he was in the first act and then they leave. Um, so you don't get to see him um, until later. But, uh, yeah, it was just, it's amazing. Amazing film. The movie was shot in a house that's in, I think, Oxfordshire. Um, I guess that's in England. Uh, but that's notoriously haunted, and it has been since the 1920s. So that's kind of cool. They actually filmed in, in a house like that. Uh, this is actually the second time that Ashling Knight uh, worked with Simon Richardson. I guess she worked with him on a movie uh, called World of Hurt that came out in 2012, which I haven't seen. I'm actually interested in seeing that now, after seeing this. What's also interesting is that the cast and crew of this movie lived in the house that they shot in. They lived in that creepy house for two weeks in order to feel the full history of the house. Now, that's, that's crazy. That's commitment right there. Um, I really love this movie. Uh, props to Wild Eye and Simon Richardson and all the actors and actresses and crew. Like, what a great job. Seemed like it had a pretty decent budget compared to some of the other Wild Eye films. I mean, you can just tell. But like, you know, the cinematography was even good. Some of those, you know, perfect timed uh, jump scares. So to say, it's not, I wouldn't call them cheap jump scares, but where the camera is, looking over, you know, she's right here, and the camera's looking over her shoulder, and you expect to see something, but you don't. Then when she moves out of frame, there's someone standing right behind her. 
But you don't see that person because she's standing right here. She's standing right here. When she moves, that's when you see him. But before, he wasn't there. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, which they do in horror movies. I mean, that's a typical horror. Another horror cliche is what they do. Um, but they did it so well. I'm telling you guys, this is a good one. This is a good one. I'd say check it out. Give it a watch. Um, in the description, I will put Wild Eyes' official website, their YouTube channel, and I'm going to put the trailer to this movie down there. You can also check it out on uh, Wild Eyes' you know, YouTube channel, but I'm going to put the trailer to this movie down there. I highly recommend this movie, The Sitter. So, um, yeah, that's my review. Uh, I'm not going to rate my movies anymore that I do. Um, I'm just going to say that, uh, you know, it was awesome. It's worth watching. Um, also, you know, if you collect Wild Eye releasing films, this definitely needs to be one in your collection. Again, excellent job, Wild Eye, with the cover art. Love this cover art. Um, even the images on the back, fantastic. They do such a good job. Anyway, guys, um, hope you enjoyed this review. Like I said, definitely check out The Sitter. And I'd like to thank Wild Eye Releasing again for sending me this to review. This is Rob. I'm signing off. Subscribe if you have not. Leave a comment. Leave a like. And I'll see you guys next time.